So today, we will attempt to answer the question that's been brought up time and time again through various different parts of the interwebs, through Screw Attack and their bullshit. We're going to answer the question, or at least attempt to answer, whether or not Dragon Ball characters can move as fast or faster than the speed of light. Now, anybody who knows me knows that even though I consider myself a pretty damn smart guy, I'm not good with numbers. I'm just not, I'm not Andy Dufresne. I am not good with numbers. Therefore, I have brought along some individuals that are very, very good with numbers. Introducing first, we're going to have a little back and forth debate slash discussion about how fast these characters are. Introducing first from Laughing Stock Media. If you've seen his video, Why Broly Isn't That Strong, you know he's good with numbers, even if you're confused. Mike. Hey guys, it's Mike here from Laughing Stock Media. How's it going? That pre taped intro that, <laughs> that you always say. All right, and joining us, another man who uh, is very good with numbers, Hail Zeon. Hey, yo, what's up? We're talking about whether or not these Dragon Ball characters are faster than the speed of light. And uh, so the thing is this there's been debates back and forth, it's just nonstop here. Um, Zeon, what is the speed of light? I, I actually, you told me the other day the numerical value of this, and I. Okay. I yeah. 600. Uh, seventy million six hundred fifteen thousand two hundred. That that's fair. Yeah. Okay, but here's a, oh man, this is gonna be a headache-inducing situation <laughs> because it really doesn't make any sense. Because if I remember correctly, wasn't Serpentine Road slash Snake Way like only a, was it not? Like it's a, a it's a million kilometers, which is uh six hundred twenty-one thousand uh six hundred or uh, three hundred seventy-one miles. So that pretty much means that Goku should have gotten there in like what two two seconds or something like that. Not even. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. All right. So let's talk about it. Okay, Mike. I'm gonna start with you, and then I'm gonna go to Zeon. Mike, do you feel that Dragon Ball characters can move as fast as speed of light? And do you think if they can, when were they able to achieve this, or at least Goku? I think that characters in Dragon Ball, and this counts the entire thing, not simply the first arc or the second or third, depending upon which one you want to count that as. Uh, I Dragon think Ball, that, not Z, just Dragon Ball or just the whole manga? I'm, I'm counting the entire manga, the entire brand. I see. I think that they can move very, very significantly past the speed of light. Like, I think that they can even do it in their base forms at this point. And I think that they've been able to, arguably, since Dragon Ball the original arc or section of the story, you know, broken before the Z portion. I think that there is many indicators that show that they could, such as, you know, Goku, you know, dodging and getting uh, Master Roshi sunglasses during the uh, Taioken or, you know, dodging lasers. And I think that there's a number of different, even though you can call it outliers, you know, feats like such as Master Roshi and Krillin's, you know, split second fight where they do all these different things faster than anyone can see. I just think that they're vastly above it in a Z with E. So I think that even the first arc, even though they say that there was a misnomer about, you know, Raditz dodging uh, Piccolo's attack, we know that the translation, at least in the uh, the more literal translation of Piccolo's attack, is called the Light of Death. So I still feel like that's more of a hint towards Raditz and characters, even as early as the beginning of Z being faster than light. But yeah, I think that there's an argument to say that even in Dragon Ball, they were uh, able to move past the light barrier. Now, wasn't the Radix line a dub-only line? The thing is, like when it comes to that, Piccolo or someone saying, oh, I can move faster than light is something that was changed. But the reason why I feel that there's an argument for it is because, again, the uh, Makanko Sapo, the, uh, the Look translated... Look at him using Japanese terms. <laughs> you, yes. know who you're, you know who you're. whose company you're in, that's why. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, I feel like in the case of that, when it's translated, it is called the Light of Death. And, of course, the Light of Death would imply that that move moves at the speed of light. And, of course, Piccolo is shocked that Raditz is able to dodge something so fast. And, you know, that would imply it's not only faster than the Kamehameha, which we have seen move at incredible speeds, like to when it got to the moon and destroyed it, versus, you know, Piccolo's normal blast that got to the moon almost instantaneously in the manga. So I feel like there's a lot of implications to say that even though maybe the dub like was like, oh, he moved fast in the speed of light or whatever, I feel like there is imp implications in the actual manga that he did regardless. 
Zeon, what do you think? Uh, we've seen – it's weird, man, because we have two examples. We have obviously the Tayo Ken example. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, because I know some folks have never seen Dragon Ball. And again, I've said it a million times. If you've only seen Z and not Dragon Ball, you're literally watching Empire before A New Hope. You need to see the entire thing or, or else you're just – you're. I don't get it. I just don't get it. But I'm going to save that rant for another day. So <laughs> in Dragon Ball – 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai, Ten Shinhan does the solar flare in the dub, the, the Taioken. Goku moves incredibly fast, grabs Roshi's sunglasses to block the move, has to be faster than the speed of light, but then we have the contradiction later on. So what do you think? Um, well, uh, I don't think... Well, with the Taioken, Goku saw it used earlier. Goku was already aware of what the move was, how it worked, the posing for it, the stance that he needed to take. The move is telegraphed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, he could have, you know, he goes for the Taio Ken. It would take Goku just a split second to dart from one part of a very small ring. Now I'm just curious how the hell he got that far then, because without getting a ring out. But anyhow, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that would only take him a split second. Yeah, because, I mean, they do move insanely fast. And like I said, you know, Tension Han is... Uh, is telegraphing the move. So your your argument so, is that at that point he could not move at the speed of light, correct? Correct. All right, when do you think or do you think he ever was able? And we're not talking about the instantaneous movement. A lot of people are, oh, what about this? What about that? Yeah, I never count that. Yeah, we're not counting that yet. I mean, obviously, when he gets that move, it's a different story. But uh, before yeah. that, okay. So your are when do you think that he was able to hit speed of light level speeds? If he if he, if he ever was, I think um, when he start it. If he does in the franchise, it's probably, and this is specifically just for, like, Goku, is when Goku's, like, SS3, like, that's probably when it started happening and when they started getting past that point. So, like, Battle of Gods, GT, like, the characters, um, well, specifically, like, Goku, Vegeta, you know, you know um, the villains, uh, Ultimate Gohan, like, those characters, I would say, are probably hitting light speed levels of movement so you not before though so okay so you feel that everything from the cell arc and previously not light speed correct just say and you know like just, just like those handful of characters that have recent like incredible tier of power of like ss3 goku now i'm gonna go to mike on this one because mike your theory is a little bit different you think that they were able to do it since even further before that and i'm gonna ask you a follow-up question but what's your your counter do you do you think that I mean, obviously, I'm pretty sure you'll agree that in the Boo Saga, they you'll agree with that. But do you think they got they unlocked it previously, like before? Oh yeah, I think that even earlier in the thousands, they were able to move past the speed of light. And I think that it's not only a matter of power scaling, but I think it's other things. First off, you guys mentioned the Snake Way or Serpent Road, as you called it, uh, example of Goku running through it. Yes, um, that's a big, big hole. If you ask Toriyama me. has said in an interview that basically when it comes to travel speed or a character moving from one point to another point, he only determined it based upon what the plot dictated or what he wanted it to be. So in those cases, those aren't really something that matters so much because not only that, but going even further, there was stated to be a retcon. And I'm not entirely sure where this was. It might have been in the Daisenshu or something at some point. But there was stated to be a retcon of the Snake Way length, in which apparently when Toriyama came up with the initial or, or following idea of the three other Kais, you know, similar to the uh, winds in the Buddhist religion, you know, the, uh, the different winds or the Hindu religion, basically that he instead of just having there be one snake, ro- a, a snake way that's uh, one million kilometers, he actually changed it to be where there's one snake way for each of the four galaxies in the universe. Yes. And it spans the entire galaxy as opposed to a million kilometers and basically you you go from that individual checkpoint across the entire galaxy to get to the next planet so basically through the retcon goku was able to run across the galaxy in six months i think that there's a vast number of instances that we can utilize especially when it comes to lasers and i'm not even counting key in this instance because of course people will always say that the speed of key is dubious even though toriyama did say that you know uh, i feel like toriyama did say in one interview that the kamehameha is light energy and moves at the speed of light but i mean that's something else entirely the thing is that in the fact with lasers there are characters in dragon ball z that utilize 
not key, but pure energy, such as the androids. And we know that the androids don't use key. So basically, for example, when uh, Goku and Tien are both standing in front of Dr. Jiro, Dr. Jiro uses his laser... Mike, you were using the Japanese terms. You're going back to the duck <laughs> terms now. Well, still. Well, Dr. What a dick tease. Dr. Garo uses his uh, light speed heat. Va- you know, they're lasers that he's shooting at his eye because it's pure energy. Yeah. So basically, he's shooting them directly at Goku and Tien. And Goku and Tien, they're both bases, obviously. Tien can't even transform. But they both see this after it's already in mid motion, considering the way that the manga is shown and dictated. And then they both still dodge it, and they're at incredibly close proximity to uh, Dr. Jiro. So that implies that they can, in their base, move faster than the speed of light. And there's a bunch of other examples, like Vegeta is right in front of Android 19. The Android 19 uses the exact same maneuver, and Vegeta, with without any effort whatsoever, is easily able to dodge it, and he's like a foot away from him. So there's just so many different instances, I feel. And even going as far as the Super, a lot of people thought that in Super, for example, Vegeta training under the 150 times gravity, I believe it was, um, and having a lot of difficulty was a sort of, you know, plot hole or issue. But when you think about it, considering that Vegeta was dodging a bunch of omnidirectional lasers under 150 times gravity in his base power considering that we know that lasers move at light speed considering that they are concentrated energy which is light um vegeta under 150 times gravity considering he was dodging all those lasers would arguably have to be at least twice the speed of light in order to dodge omnidirectional barrages of lasers and maneuver his way all around them. And that's under 150 times gravity. So, of course, considering that Vegeta exerted all of that force under that amount of gravity, if he were to exert the same amount of force in his base, he would be moving minimum 300 times the speed of light in order to maneuver around all of those lasers. So that, to me, implies that even in their base, they're way above the speed of light. And then if you add on to the uh, speed boost and their different transformations, which bring out their key to full effect. There are thousands, if not more, times the speed of light when it comes to combat and close-range fighting. All right, Zeon, what do you think about everything that was just said? It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, um, well, as far as like the, like the whole like light speed lasers thing, uh, I'm just going to go with um, anime physics. I mean, like, you know, just because, you know, they are shooting lasers, it doesn't necessarily mean that, like, you know, it, it's, you know, it's fictional, you know, comic book anime lasers like we don't know if they're actually moving at light speed so like i mean like as far as like hard numbers go like the only time i've ever gotten like solid numbers on any specific feats has been goku's pre kame training uh the serpent road traversing to uh kaio's planet and then the trip back and so yeah like Goku during uh, his training with the uh, before he started training with uh, Kami Senin, he was moving at yeah you know, he could do twenty six point three miles. That is exactly how fast he was able to run. What is that fact? Uh, what is that number from? Oh, that 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 is like just right after peel off. Um, so yeah, that's that was like the first time we've ever had like an, a definite like exactly like, this is how fast these characters can move, and that's actually yeah. humanly possible. Yes. Um. And then, um, like, with Snake Way, you know, as far as, you know, what, what Mike was saying about the whole Galaxy Retcon thing, I don't think that's ever stated in the show, so I don't, or in the manga directly. And until they actually give, like, a new number for Serpent Road, I'm not sure. <laughs> don't hold like, your breath. Right? Because, you know, like, all I know is it's like, you know, this was the stated number, and this is how long it was supposed to take Goku to traverse that distance when Toriyama was writing it. Like, Toriyama came up with the million kilometers thing, and it took Goku, you know, 177 days, uh, you know, or between 100, 177 and 182. Yeah, something like that. If you lowball, if you lowball Goku's feats, or, or I mean, if, if you highball him, to, like, saying that it only took him 177, like, the minimum amount of days he could have done this in. If he was sleeping during that time frame... Which in the manga we don't see him sleep. We only see him sleeping in the anime. But yeah, but, we'll but say that he was slept. a Toriyama idea that was incorporated into the anime. The whole thing of him falling off, 
even though it wasn't on the manga, that was Toriyama's idea. Yeah, and Toriyama okay, so, did say, so of course, Toriyama... that the million miles or million kilometers was just a big number that he that he heard. It wasn't really anything supposed to be a real barometer of his speed. It's just a, it's 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 typical Toriyama Toei. Let's go back and change okay. this to make it fit, right? He should have made it one point three million kilometers. Oh God. <laughs> 10%. No, Zeon, continue your point. Yeah, so yeah, if, if Goku was sleeping during that time frame, he would have been, you know, going roughly 219 miles an hour. Um, uh, his traversal speed back, we don't really have, like, a good <laughs> estimate on that one, unfortunately. No, we don't. I because... always thought it was twice as fast, but we don't know that. Well, no, because that yeah, would because take I'm... three months. <laughs> That's true. Shit. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, Goku flies straight over Snake Way instead of going down the curves, and he's flying as opposed to running. That's true, too, yes. Uh, well, he does start off by jumping and running, but then it seems like he slows down. Yeah, yeah, because he can't fly very well at all at that point. Yeah, that's why he's um, still using King Tom. Yeah, like, yeah. The only other good ex- example, though, of, like, later in the series about speed travel is Trunks getting the Dragon Radar. Yes. Yeah, Goku, you know, goes and distracts them. Uh, uh, distracts Majin Buu and uh, Bobbity, and Trunks goes to get the radar. Um, if you've ever looked at, like, you know, the official map of Dragon Ball, Kami's Lookout, you know, it took Trunks a few minutes to get from um, the Heavenly Realm to West City. You know, if he was moving at the speed of light, I mean, if he was doing it to the Super Saiyan, like, if he was moving at the speed of light, like, you can go around the, like, light can go around the Earth six times in a second yes so yeah like if 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 he was moving anywhere near light speed like goku would have enough time to go hi boo and trunks would have already been in west city within another minute he would have had the radar and in another few seconds he would have been already back yeah well this whole thing sounds like go ahead go ahead well i was gonna say the thing is that that's kind of a difficult thing to judge because there are a bunch of different factors at play there uh for instance the dragon map is very difficult to utilize because there are errors in it for example when you Mm -hmm. look at the dragon map you can see that at the bottom or towards the bottom there is an island where dr Mm -hmm. jero supposedly was fighting piccolo and stuff like that you know before Mm -hmm. he ran away however then it says on like a completely different continent is where Dr. Jero ran to where his, you know, his, uh, his secret lab is, but he ran on land the entire time. So it's impossible for him to have like jumped over or flown over water or anything like that. Cause they would have been able to see him, you know, they specifically said he was doing it on foot. So it's impossible for that to, you know, so I feel like there's different flaws right. as far as the actual map goes. Secondly, Shrunks did stop on more than one occasion just to watch Goku versus Boo's fight. And third, if mm-hmm. characters are moving at relativistic, you know, faster than light speeds, then they're also likely communicating at faster than light speeds too. We don't really know how they do it, but again, you can go back to the original Roshi versus Krillin fight where we see them having a conversation fast, not only a conversation, but other things faster than any normal human can see them. And we do know that they use cinematic timing, so everything that happens on screen or everything that happens in the manga is not at real time because obviously if it yes. was we wouldn't be able to see them doing anything we would just see landscapes right. and then we would see someone dead yeah. you know um and i'm gonna actually ask you about that in a minute when it comes to frieza but go ahead well yeah i was actually gonna bring that up though yeah, the Frieza five minute thing is uh, it needs to be talked about because really a lot of people try and say, of course, it wasn't five minutes because I mean, obviously they were talking and they were doing this and that. But the thing is, in the manga, nothing ever contradicts it being five minutes. They never say, oh, it's longer. I know in the anime, Frieza is like, oh, it's taking longer. I'll give it five more minutes. They never say anything like that in the manga. Um, that was not in the Japanese version. Yeah, at all. it is implied yeah. to be implied, yeah. five minutes, and Frieza even is like. I can hold this form for maybe over a minute, which is his ultimate 100%. So really, the fight between them after Frieza blasts the planet is probably only like two to three minutes. So uh, I know that that seems ridiculous, but obviously if they're moving at the speed of light, there is an implication that they are speaking and that they are, you know, either 
telepathically speaking or they're speaking or communicating in some way that is also faster than the speed of light. And I know a lot of people when it comes to the Frieza example will be like, well, that's one example. It's also bullshit. You know, nothing anywhere else in the series happens like this, too. So we know it's a misnomer. But actually, that's not true because there actually is another five minute fight that happens later on in the Dragon Ball series. And that is the fight between Ultimate Gohan and Boo Tanks or, you know, Boo with uh, Go Tanks absorbed into him. Because we know for a fact, because, uh, you know, uh, Gotenks says this in the manga or Goten Trunks, that they can only hold fusion for five minutes when they're Super Saiyan 3. However, after he goes into the Super Saiyan 3 transformation, you know, fusion as Gotenks, he immediately after that, he's absorbed. So we know that that means that Boo, with him absorbed into himself, could only have been in that state for five minutes. And look at all the stuff that happens just over the course of five minutes, the fight between Ultimate Gohan or Cho Gohan, you know, as you guys would call him, and um, Boo Tanks, you know, that of course there is Goku coming back to life, the ex explanation of the Batara the fusion of uh, Kibito Shin or um, Kibito Kai, whatever the hell they call him. And, uh, you know, all this other stuff happens in five minutes. So I think that there's just so much credence to the fact that everything just happens at such ridiculous speeds in Dragon Ball. I mean, the entire Boo saga takes place in two days. So I just feel like, yes, they mm -hmm. actually do move much faster and even speak faster, despite that, you know, kind of lacking logic. I hate to say it, but it sounds like it doesn't make any sense either way. Because there's there's points that you both have made right. different points where you could say, okay, well, not really speed light, but then okay, well, maybe they are, and at some point, I guess they are. So are we gonna chalk this one up to uh, they are at the speed of light sometimes? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer this now. Yeah. I feel like we rob people. <laughs> we can just keep going back and forth on this. I mean, as far as like the whole communication thing goes, I mean, Goku was stalling for time during that whole sequence. So, I mean, if they can't communicate super quickly, I don't think Goku would have been in that scenario. And Trunks only stops once when he, when he feels Goku at SS2. Yeah. The rest of the time, he's just flying after uh, uh, Goku yells at him. Well, he watches but... him go Super Saiyan 3 as well. Yeah, for a second. Yeah. Well, I don't think he stops in the manga. I, I think in the manga I could he be wrong stops on. and he says, oh, I don't want to be yelled at again, and then he leaves. But uh, I feel like he does stop yes. temporarily. But then again, like how fast, it does make you, it kind of begs the question of even though Super Saiyan 3 takes forever for them to go into, wait, what how long does say? it actually what, take for them to go just, into? Wait, 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 what did you just say? Super what? Super Mario Brothers We're 3. We're rubbing off on him. <laughs> we are rubbing uh, off on him. Zeon. Geek them. I bet you're so proud. Oh my god, I, there's a tear in my eye right now. You know, I have seen the series in Japanese. <laughs> this brought a stuff. tear to my glass eye. No, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I don't even remember who was speaking, so I'll You just were! You're not about SSJ3. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying in general that I feel like just things, it's impossible for us to really dictate or determine the speed which characters are moving at at particular times yes, unless true. they specifically say or we have something that we can like judge by real life because like unless you're doing the speed feat with Vegeta and the lasers under gravity or unless they're using real lasers from their eyes. I know that there's anime <laughs> physics, but then again, like in Western comic books, there's always, you know, oh, it's moving at the exact speed of and Superman moved 200 quadrillion times the speed of light to fly from Zeta to this, you know, other planet within the course of a frame. So obviously he it must be faster. It's always ridiculous nonsense like that. And I just feel like, you know, it just seems like there's always some sort of weird double standard with Dragon Ball Z where characters, they have to be moving at sonic speeds because we could still see them in the frames and we could still see their punches when it's obvious that Akira Toriyama did it because we wouldn't be able to see the fights if it was faster than light, you know, to us. Yeah. So Remember, Dragon, I, I Ball, and Dragon Ball helped in inspire sign not the other way around mm -hmm. so all right well let's chalk this right. one up to it doesn't make any sense anyways but it does make sense sometimes yeah it, there's just never it's never a clear answer i hate to say it but there are examples for both really um but i guess we can all agree that by the time we get to the end of the series all of the powered characters can definitely go way past speed of light and plus when goku does the instantaneous movement yeah. and weiss as well weiss and i think beers too fuck it all of them. Wiss is definitely moving faster than the speed of light. If he's traversing the galaxies and the speeds that he's saying. But yeah, and as much time as he's watching an anime. That. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Is, right? But where is the like that? Those don't even make sense to me though, because like, how the hell can Weiss like just fly between dimensions like that? I mean, he must be moving 
billions of times the speed of light to fly between dimensions. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, obviously in, in uh, DC, they actually have the five laws of speed in which there is, you know, below s- subsonic, sonic speed, you know, supersonic, light speed. And interdimensional. Yes. And um, yes, the Pokemon move, you know, now you're confused. But <laughs> uh, but just in general, it just seems like how the hell can we fly from like space to like from the Earth to Kai's realm? It doesn't make any sense. It's a completely different dimension. That's not a part of space. You know what I mean? But eh, it's an anime. That's it. It's an anime. Right. All, all right. Well, check out Hail Zeon's channel. I'm putting the link in the description below. Check out Mike from Laughing Stock Media's channel as well. And I'm sure there'll be more debates coming. Mike, I believe you're working on a video that actually we're going to talk about the five minute thing in more detail. Is that right? Yes, I am. And it should be coming out this week, perhaps. Maybe it'll probably, it, by the time people hear this, it'll probably already be out. Yep. So, all right. Well, thanks everybody again. Check out their channels and I'll catch your ass down the road.